This one is called Color Deaf and Tone Blind, <clears throat> which doesn't make any sense. But, um, it's about New Orleans. New Orleans was a place where you could crack the earth by stepping on your mother's spine or by horse and buggy that can't really take you anywhere at all. The way a woman in love won't shower after sex just to keep that feeling inside a courtyard on Decatur Street, I learned one of the first secrets that I couldn't keep. How easily I would go blue for red. Lost between fingers and ivy, drunk on bourbon streets, I could have sworn the moon was laughing at me trying to balance Sirius with one eye closed on the tip of my pen. If I'd measured up the days right, I'd remember everything that you and I never did, like a silly dream that never happened in the midnight between yellow and brown, where we'd huddle beneath a sloping roof. Sure, this would last forever, 90 degrees, and knowing that guilt is tattooed with nudity, and every line of poetry that I ever wrote you was a punch waiting to be joked about. New Orleans was red with envy and white bright the way something can be hot, like a father out of spite burning a child's arm who grows up with the name Prometheus. Between all the places I could never walk to and a bicycle with no handlebars, I learned the most important things about life. Red is a primary color and can only be defined by herself. And if you mix six feet, two inches, the color brunette, Billie Holiday's tongue and symbols, you get the recipe for every love spell cast on the pavement of every back alley you've now forgotten how to get to. New Orleans was always two creams and one sugar, a tan that you couldn't avoid. And somewhere behind the safety of gates and guard dogs, you could fall in love just for the sake of remembering how. Lost behind the endless colorblind purple, I lean into the future, like a seven-year-old boy peering through a cracked door to see you dancing in front of your mirror, nude. And somehow, I imagine a third you falling in love with a second me.